Mind your decisions, I'm Presh Talwalker. Start with the square whose side length is 20. Draw quarter circles inside this square. What is the area of the region shaded in blue? That's part one of the question. Part two is to solve for this area, and part three is to solve for this area. Your solution should only involve geometry. Trigonometry and calculus are not allowed. I think many people around the world who have suggested this and similar problems. Pause the video if you'd like to give it a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I credit Dr. Perkins for this proof. Suppose the square has a side length of r so that we can solve this problem generally. The area of the square will be equal to r squared. Now consider the quarter circles. Label this area as a. That means these areas will also be equal to a. Suppose this area is b. That means these areas will also be equal to b. Finally, label this area as c. Notice that 4a plus 4b plus c is also equal to the area of the square, which is equal to r squared. Let's get another equation involving ABC. Let's calculate the area of this quarter circle. It'll be equal to pi r squared over 4. It'll also be equal to 2a plus 3b plus c. We now have two equations for three variables. Let's get a third equation. We'll calculate the area of this shape here. To do that, we'll do some preliminary work. The side of the square is equal to r, and that means the radius of this quarter circle is equal to r, and the radius of the other quarter circle is also equal to r. We have an equilateral triangle, so each of its angles is equal to 60 degrees. Let's calculate the area of this circular sector. It'll be equal to pi r squared multiplied by 60 degrees over 360 degrees. This simplifies to be pi r squared over 6. We can then calculate the area of this equilateral triangle, which will be r squared multiplied by the square root of 3 all over 4. If we subtract the equilateral triangle's area from the circular sector, we get the area of the circular segment. If we flip this circular segment horizontally, we get the other one on the other side of the triangle. We'll add this area to the circular sector, and we get the area of the shape that we want. We'll simplify this formula a little bit, and then we'll go back to our a, b, and c diagram, so we get that the area is equal to a plus 2b plus c. We now have three equations for three variables, and we can very carefully solve for a, b, and c. First, we'll eliminate c by subtracting the second equation from the first equation. Then, we'll eliminate 2a by doing the following subtraction. We end up that 2b plus c is equal to the following, which we'll substitute in to this last equation. This is an equation only in a, so we'll solve for the variable a. Knowing the value of a, we can substitute back and get the value of b. Knowing b, we can substitute back and get the value of c. And there you go. This is the solution to our problem. We've calculated the areas of a, b, and c using only geometry and a little bit of algebra. We can solve for any value of r. Suppose r is equal to 20, this will be equal to approximately 126.06. But I think it's awesome that we can solve for a, b, and c for any value of the side of the square. Now just for fun, let's solve for the area of this shape using trigonometry. This is equal to the area of a sector, and this is the area of a triangle. If we make this equal to a triangle in the same exact radius and the same exact central angle, we get the area of a circular segment. Next, let's consider a triangle and use Alkashi's law of cosines. It states the following. If we make this an isosceles triangle, where both of these are equal to the radius and the central angle is equal to theta, we get the following version. We'll use these formulas to solve the problem. So this shape will be equal to the following. We first will consider this radius. We have an equilateral triangle as before, which means the remaining angle is equal to 30 degrees. 
Now if we draw this radius, that means the remaining angle will also be equal to 30 degrees, so the angle in between is equal to 30 degrees. We then calculate the area of this circular segment. We'll change the angle from degrees to radians, and then we'll use our formula. Sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. We then will calculate the value of x squared using al Kashi's law of cosines. We'll substitute in and simplify. Now how does this help us? Well, if we go back to our original shape, it's going to be equal to 4 of these circular segments plus the area of the square in between. So we take 4 times the circular segment and then simplify. Then we have this square with a side length of x. The area of this square will be equal to x squared, which we've already calculated. We then add up these areas and we get the area of the shape. And it's exactly the same formula as before. What I like about this approach is that you see how the shape decomposes into other simple shapes like a square and a circular segment. It's a great problem and I can see why students around the world are asked questions like this. Thanks for making Mind Your Decisions one of the best channels on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for your support.